everyone, I'm Victoria and welcome to part 2 of this series on game development degrees. This video will be on what a game development degree is actually like based on my experience studying game development in graduating this past year. Because I actually believe some parts of it may not be what you're expecting, we're going to switch it up from the last video and go unscripted this time, or at least a little less scripted, and fingers crossed it will turn out well. So I'm going to go ahead and say that much of what I'm going to have in this video is based off of my experience with a BFA in game development in a private university in the United States graduating in 2020, but it's probably going to vary for you. If you're getting your BS in game development, that's going to be different. If you're entering college in 2020 instead of graduating, that's going to be definitely different. I'd say it's always just best to look at a degree's course listing and ask former students about what they think of that program. But without further ado, here is what was in my game development degree. So the courses in my degree were split up into three different categories. You had the general education courses, all the art studio courses, and then of course game development courses. And since this is a private university, the course structure and semester system was a little weird. We were on a quarter system instead of a semester system. Every class was 10 weeks. You would take three classes at a time, and each class was two and a half hours long. So for the general ed courses, those were like your regular university courses. You get your lectures, tests, quizzes, whatnot. But then there's also the art studio and major courses, which were studio based. All right, so these studio courses were generally much, much tougher than your general ed courses. The school would discourage people from taking more than two at a time, and learning scope and these can absolutely kick your ass. In a studio class, you decide what you're doing and learning from that course based off what you choose to make. So you can definitely choose a project that nobody in the building knows how to do if you really wanted to. But if you already said that's what you're going to make, now you're stuck with that, even if you get stuck. So if your APK file isn't saving correctly, okay, well, too bad. You committed to an Android mobile game, and that's what you're doing now. <laughs> Which really just meant that the whole class collectively learns troubleshooting together in the most grueling way possible. But I'll go over these courses in a minute. I want to first cover the general education courses, because these are the bread and butter for every BFA in the United States. You first have your general English, math, social science, communication courses like you do with any degree. But then surprisingly, with a BFA, also way more art history than you ever thought you needed. Depending on your university, you could be taking five to seven different art history classes. My university required five, which I thought was a ton, and then I'd look over at some universities that also offered similar BFAs, and they were requiring seven. It's insane. <laughs> Then there's the general art courses. I think these are pretty standard across all BFA degrees. You first have drawing one, which focuses on form, shape, perspective. You're drawing things without color using pencil and charcoal. Then I had drawing two, which now focuses much more on color and how light and color interact. After that came 2D design and 3D design, and then I took metalworking and woodworking as my electives. So a lot of these classes are not directly applicable to game development, I know, but I honestly believe that a more varied knowledge base outside of just my craft actually helps, and I can definitely say for sure that the students who took life drawing later did much better in character sculpting than those who didn't. Now onto what you really care about probably though, the game development courses. The first course was something called Survey of Computer Arts Applications, which was essentially Adobe and Autodesk the boot camp. Um, just every two weeks, they would introduce a new program, you would do a few assignments in that program, and then they'd move on to the next one. Nothing was really intended to be portfolio ready, it just gave a nice overview of each program you'll need to start using in order to get by in the other classes that come after this one. Next I had introductory programming. This class wasn't game development specific, I think we also had it with VFX students. But my professor had us using P5. It was a JavaScript library for teaching artists to code. We did a few different art projects through code, as well as some data visualizations and then a simple game at the end. I know some other professors actually used Unity for this class and had their students start learning C Sharp instead. I had digital design aesthetics, which was sort of a game art class, but also computers and digital art as a medium in general. It was pretty interesting to me just because it was the first class where I had to make art on a time limit. Every class we were given some sort of prompt and within an hour we would have to make something fitting that prompt. 
Before this class, I had never used a drawing tablet before, so that was just a lot of fun to start using. And then I also continued using P5 from Intro to Programming, and I made things like interactive fractal generators and a few procedural textures because I didn't know Substance Designer existed at the time. But after that, I finally got to Introductory Game Art, and this class, students were no longer using Maya, but also using Unreal and Substance as well. The entire point of the course is to just go through the process of creating some sort of functional game environment. I'll admit a lot of these introductory game art environments are really ugly, but we got something all the way through Maya to Unreal working functional in a game. Then there was Game Design 1 and Game Design 2, and this is the part where I see a lot of game development majors leave. They come to this program thinking they're going to make video games, and then you actually have to spend a lot of time making tabletop games. I mean, that is the fastest way to learn actual game design, and it's the fastest way to iterate on rules. But a lot of students don't like that. They, they're thinking, okay, this isn't what I signed up for, and I see a lot of people drop out during these classes just because it's not video games. After these two classes, I took game tech and then applied programming. Game tech was you have 10 weeks, you have to make some sort of functional game using blueprints and Unreal, and then applied programming was, okay, you have 10 weeks, you need to make a functional game in Unity. I also then took a AR project class, which was again, you have 10 weeks, you need to make some sort of game, but this time in a team and it has to be a AR and GPS based mobile game. Then there was Game Art 2, which was very similar to Game Art 1 in that you had 10 weeks to make a game environment, but this time they expect it to be a bit higher quality. And then you also have to start using ZBrush for a high to low poly workflow and then a low to high poly workflow, as well as incorporating procedural textures. After this, I had Game Tech 2, which was nothing like Game Tech 1. We weren't making a game. This class was entirely on shaders and particle effects in Unreal. It was kind of the let's make art from math, the class. At the beginning of senior year, everyone then had to take portfolio class. It was all about building a portfolio, resume, business cards, learning to go to networking events, reaching out to companies, researching companies, and figuring out what roles you're going to be applying for. For me, going into this class, I didn't really have anything in my portfolio to put together at the time, but it kind of helped me focus what I was going to be studying my last year. Then there's Senior Studio, which is essentially you're in a team, you have 20 weeks, you need to make a game, and each person takes on different roles, and now you have to work with version control as well. Which, depending on your role, can end up being the toughest course in the entire program. I also took a undergraduate independent study class, which I did on material creation, so that I could learn Substance Designer, Quixel Mixer, and the Material Editor in Unreal. I actually had a lot of fun in this course, even though it was just me taking it. I then took digital character sculpting as an elective. It was kind of the intro to ZBrush for a game students class. Over the entire course, you made two characters, one that was super low poly and then one that was slightly less low poly. And then finally, for my last class, there was post-production, which is essentially portfolio part two or get a job the class. But it ended up kind of working as a second independent study where students just focused on a specific project that fit into the role they were trying to apply for. So for me, that meant studying rendering and optimization, and then I also ended up making a few more things in ZBrush just to, just for the fun of it. So that's all of my classes, but I also interned and then worked part-time as a VR and AR developer for a year while in school. That was awesome, and I learned as much from five classes put together from it, but interning or working wasn't required by the school and technically wasn't part of the program. I also don't want to forget field trips because there were a ton of these Every class required a field trip, some of them were your class goes together to a specific event, and some of them were more open-ended like go to some sort of game networking event this many times during this quarter. I often ended up going to more than I was required to because I just thought they were really fun. But alright, these were some of the field trips. For general classes, a lot of times these were art museum trips with our art history professors guiding us. We also went to the Atlanta Botanical Gardens, and then the college had a fashion museum they liked to send us to a lot. And then sometimes they sent us to the library's art collection, which I will say that art university libraries are super cool. My first college had only five game development books in the library shoved in with all the chess strategy books in the dark back corner of the library's third floor. But at Art College, they had an entire section plus subscriptions to all the art and technology magazines I wanted to read. Hanging out there and reading about game engine architecture while sneaking some apple juice in my binder before class was pretty awesome. 
But that aside, game development field trips were a little different, and we had a lot more of these. They sent us on trips to employer studios a few times, and just check out what they're doing. The college also hosted their own animation fest, which was pretty sweet. I got to go to panels about directing technical animation and the newest Toy Story. There was also Gaming Fest, which was a similar thing, but for gaming and on a smaller scale. Then a ton of game development conferences. Every year the college would try to encourage our entire major to go to Siege, which is the local Atlanta game development convention, which is awesome for networking, and plus I got to meet some of my favorite textbook writers and James Portnow out at one year. I also went to ECGC, which is kind of like a mini GDC, but for the East Coast US. It's up in North Carolina with all the epic dudes. And then there was also GDC. The university was sending us to GDC this year. They had plane tickets, passes, a booth, hotel rooms all lined up, and then COVID hit and we went to online GDC instead. Yeah. Every now and then the school would host a collab fair, which was where digital media students would meet with other students to team up on projects. Through this, I ended up working on the backgrounds for 2D student animation at one point, and then also concept art for a different student game. There's the college's career fair, which is where you stand in line for four hours to show your portfolio to Disney and then leave because you didn't have time to stand in line for anything else. All right, most booths were not that bad, but it's still kind of like lines at an amusement park. I also ended up going to indie game dev meetups and Unreal meetups in Atlanta for some of my field trips. I went to a ton of portfolio reviews. I would try to go and have my portfolio reviewed every six months or every time I've changed a lot in it. And then, of course, like every game development school should have, a lot of game jams. We did global game jam every year, plus some smaller local game jams throughout the year. Then there were a few field trips I went to just for the credit. I wasn't actually sure what the event was for, but I went for the free food and got the credit for the field trip. Now, that is my entire game development degree there. That is everything in it. Could have gone with less art history, more computer science fundamentals in my opinion, but it was pretty solid. Although a game development BFA is risky and I wouldn't suggest it for everyone, I mean I can't diss it. I transferred so everything except for general ed courses was in two years. I went to school year round over full time to save money, otherwise it would have been longer, but still. Two and a half years ago, I didn't know what a drawing tablet was, had never made a 3D model, didn't know what a game engine was, and had never written a lot of code. Yet one year in was able to start helping on professional AR and VR projects, and four months ago started working in a studio in my field that's way higher caliber than I ever thought I would aim for right out of school. And would I technically have been able to learn that all on my own? Yeah, probably. There's the internet. But would it have been in two years? Absolutely not. I would have gone on a wild tangent instead, just going deeply into one odd specific topic that didn't actually target the field I was going for. I probably would have been left starting my career at 25 or 26 instead of 20. Game design school will likely not be exactly the same for you, I am 99% sure of that. But there are good programs and there are bad ones, so next video I'm going to be going over the process of how to pick and compare game development universities. Until then, if you're going down this route, the best advice I can give is 1. Be prepared to make a lot of games because you will have to make a lot of games in game development school. 2. Compare yourself to entry-level professionals, not your classmates. And 3. Know that the quality of all projects will depend on how much time you're willing to put into it. But alright, thank you everyone and I will see you next week.